Hello everyone. Welcome to English Tutorials by Poonam Thakur. In this video, I have covered chapter number 2, The Tiger King by Kalki from class 12th, English Core Textbook with Stars. Here I will be discussing about the author, literary devices employed by the writer Kalki in the story, summary, significance of the title and poster highlighting the need to save by life. Let me tell you about the author first. Sri Ramaswamy Krishnamurti, popularly known as Kalki, was born on 9th September 1899 in Putmangalam. He was an Indian independence activist, social crusader, novelist, short story writer, journalist, humorist, travel writer, script writer, poet, film and music critic from Tamil Nadu. He has authored 35 volumes of short stories, 10 novelettes, 5 novels, biographies, travelogues, historical romances, editorial, political writings and hundreds of film and music reviews. His novel, Alai Osai, won him the Sahitya Academy Award posthumously in 1956. Kalki has the rare talent of taking the reader back to the point and time of history when the story is supposed to have taken place. Here is the summary of the story, The Tiger King by Kalki. The story begins with the narrator introducing the readers to the late Maharaja of Pratibandhapuram, popularly known as the Tiger King. The Maharaja Jalani Jangjang Bahadur, we are told, met his end in an extraordinary manner and it can be revealed only at the end of the tale. When the prince was born, the chief astrologer predicted that he would grow up to become a hero, a mighty warrior, but that he would eventually die. To everybody's surprise, the infant prince, who was just 10 days old, asked intelligent questions to the astrologers and demanded to know how he would die. He was told that he would be killed by a tiger. However, he was least affected by this. As soon as he heard it pronounced, the crown prince gave a deep growl. Terrifying words emerged from his lips. Let tigers we wear. No other miracle took place. The child grew like any other royal child, drinking white cow's milk, taught by an English tutor, looked after by an English nanny and saw nothing but English film. When the prince turned 20, he was crowned king. It was then that the prediction of his death by a tiger reached the Maharaja's ear and he in turn to see if God himself killed a tiger. Thrilled, he told the state astrologer who replied that he can kill 99 tigers in the same manner but he must be careful with the hundredth one. From that day onwards, tiger hunting was prohibited in Pratibandhapuram for everyone but the Maharaja. The Maharaja almost lost his throne when he did not allow a high-ranking British officer to hunt tigers in Pratibandhapuram. The officer's request for a photograph with a tiger killed by the Maharaja was also denied. So, to pacify the officer, the Maharaja sent 50 diamond rings to his wife, expecting that she would take one or two, but she kept all the rings and sent a thank you note to the Maharaja instead. The total bill of 3 lakh rupees came from the British dwellers, but the Maharaja was happy as he was able to save his kingdom. Within 10 years, Maharaja killed 70 tigers and he could kill no more as he had wiped out the entire tiger population of his kingdom. Hence, he decided to marry a girl from a royal state which had more tigers to complete his target. Whenever he visited his in-laws, he killed 5-6 tigers. Finally, he had killed 99 tigers and was feverishly anxious to kill the 100th but couldn't find the tiger anywhere. Rumor of the tiger sighting near the village proved to be disappointing. The Maharaja became gloomy and temperamental. 
He raised the land tax and also dismissed some of his minions. The Diwan was warned of the danger of losing his post if this went on any longer. Fearing a mutiny and prospect of losing his job, Diwan decided to do something, so he visited People's Park in Madras, brought an old tiger, he took it to the forest where the Maharaja was hunting and left it there. The Maharaja found the tiger and was overjoyed. He took great care and shot the tiger and left the place with great triumph. Once the Maharaja left, the hunters realized that the beast was not dead. The Maharaja has missed the mark and the animal had only fainted from the shock of the bullet wheezing past. One of the hunters then shot the tiger and it was paraded through the town as per the Maharaja's wishes. After this episode, he now started paying attention to his family. The Maharaja Sir Jalani Jang Jang Bahadur shopping for a special gift for his son on his third birthday. A few days later, it was the third birthday of the Maharaja's son and he wanted to buy a present for him. He decided to buy a wooden tiger from the toy shop. The Maharaja bought a wooden tiger which was poorly carved and was made by an unskilled carpenter. When the Maharaja was playing with the prince, a tiny silver of the wooden tiger pierced his right hand, which later developed into a sore. Three surgeons operated on him, but in vain, he died of infection. In this manner, the hundredth tiger took his final revenge upon the tiger king. Dear students, the story is a satire on the conceit of those in power. The author employs the literary device of dramatic irony in the story to make it more captivating and interesting. Here I have included explanation of the literary devices used in the story to help you understand its usage. First, I am going to discuss what is dramatic irony. A literary technique originally used in Greek tragedy by which the full significance of a character's words or actions is clear to the audience or reader, although unknown to the character. Dramatic irony involves a situation in a play or a narrative in which the audience shares with the author knowledge of the facts which a character is ignorant or unaware of. So, the character acts in a way inappropriate to the actual situation. Students, let me explain dramatic irony once again. Dramatic irony is defined as when an audience watching a play understands what's going on in a situation while the characters are unaware of what is happening. Let me quote few examples. In the last scene in the William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, Romeo commits suicide because he thinks Juliet is dead. The dramatic irony in the story, the Tiger King is sharp. When the Tiger King alone is unaware that his bullet had not killed the hundredth tiger. In the end also, when surgeons announced that the operation was successful and declared the king dead. Next, we have satire. What is satire? It is usually a comical piece of writing which makes fun of an individual or a society to expose its vices and shortcomings. So we can say satire is a technique employed by writers to expose and criticize follies and corruption of an individual or a society by using humor, irony, exaggeration or ridicule, particularly in the context of contemporary politics and other relevant issues. Next we have conceit. What is conceit? Conceit is an excessively favorable opinion of one's own ability, excessive pride in oneself, 
arrogance, vanity, wit, etc. So in the chapter, the tiger king, Maharaja was so conceited that he killed 99 tigers just to prove the prophecy wrong. Conceit has another meaning also. A conceit is a kind of metaphor that compares two very unlike things in a surprising and clever way. Let's focus on the significance of the title. The Tiger King is a very appropriate title for the story for several reasons. First of all, the Tiger King is crazy about tiger hunting, so much so that he marries a princess whose father's kingdom has a sizable tiger population. He kills 99 tigers just to fulfill his vow. Secondly, the king with all his frenzy, anger and ruthlessness is as ferocious as a tiger. Thirdly, he dies of a silver prick received from a wooden toy tiger. In the end, the prediction that a tiger would cause the king's death also comes true. Since the story revolves round a king and the hundred tigers, it could not be better titled than the Tiger King. Next, I have included poster on Save the Tiger as the story highlights the very important issue of protecting wildlife and environment. And poster is a useful means of making an appeal or to create awareness in public interest. A good poster includes catchy slogans, phrases and state the purpose clearly. It should be visually attractive and you can make matchstick figures or if you are really good in drawing, you can draw to convey the message clearly. And name of the issuing authority is always mentioned at the end of the poster. Once your poster is done, you have to enclose it within the box and always use pencil to draw the box. Observe the poster in front of you. I have used catchy slogan, don't be wild, be wild. Save them when you might, no need to fight. There are other phrases which highlights why we should conserve and protect tigers. Save the tiger, conserve the ecosystem. For that we have to reduce human-tiger conflict. Protect tigers and their habitat. After that you have to mention the name of the issuing authority at the end of the poster. You can see towards the left hand side I have written the name of the issuing authority. Once your poster is done, you have to enclose the poster within a box and you always use pencil to make a box. I am sure that you have now understood the layout of the poster. The message Kalki hands out in the story The Tiger King is quite relevant in the modern times when the tiger appears to be on the brink of extinction. The story The Tiger King makes a fanatic call for the protection of the tigers, indeed all flora and fauna. The death of the king is a result of the nemesis that follows his thoughtless killing of hundred tigers just to disprove an astrological prediction about his death. No wonder when king dies the surgeons announce, the operation was successful, the Maharaja is dead. Thus, natural justice does take place, although little late. The author seems to suggest to his readers to follow the dictum, live and let live. Students, I hope the story of the Tiger King is clear to you and you have now understood the literary devices used by Kalki to highlight the conceit of those in power. If you still have doubts, feel free to drop a comment and I will get back to you. Thank you for watching. Like, share and subscribe. English Tutorials by Poodam Thakur.